Hey guys, welcome back to another video on the Inside Spurs channel. I hope you're well, hope you're enjoying your Thursday. Um, as you can tell, I'm just in from the gym, so gym fit is still on. Um, and it is miserable out there. And I think, I like a lot of Spurs fans right now, they're feeling what the weather's showing, a little bit of misery. Um, I hope to give you a bit more of some solace over the next sort of day and a half, because the, the, basically the, the window shuts tomorrow at 11pm. So... I hope between now and this video, and then and basically being my last video until leading up to that point, I hope that I can give you some solace in all of the madness that it is Tottenham Hotspur. So in this video, we're gonna talk a little bit about some outgoings, okay? We've got some interesting Eric Dyer situations. Um, we've got a Dane Scarlett move, Pierre Hoiberg. Uh, we've got Davison Sanchez news. We've got sort of a list of players that we're expecting to leave. And we've got a little bit of an Indombele update. So. Plenty to get in with, okay, so I will jump in and I will address the Ansu Fati situation and give you an update on that. And one thing I will also say is I will wait till the window's done to give you my true opinion about how this window has been. What was good, what was bad, what should have been better, what should have, you know, whatever, whatever the case, right? I'll go through it. Um, and we'll sort of just see, okay, we'll sort of just see. Um, and I'm... You know, what might happen is we might put a little Q&A out to, for all you guys to kind of answer some questions about the window, you know, ask me my thoughts on certain things. Because as much as these videos are about me talking about reports, giving you a slight little sort of opinion, I don't always give you a full opinion because I just don't have the time to, you know. And I'd love to do a video where you put in those questions and give you full on opinions about things. And, you know, you might sit there and go, oh, Andy isn't a, a fence sitter. Maybe he's actually... One way or the other, you know. But let's talk Eric Dyer first and foremost. So this came from The Athletic. So Athletic, if you don't know who The Athletic are, it's a big publication full of pretty much some of the better journalists of football world. You know, your David Ornsteins, your Eccleshares, uh, Pat Pitt Brooks, all these lot, right? And it came out that the Eric Dyer was prioritising remaining at Spurs before leaving next summer on a free transfer. The player just like Spurs, is now hoping for a resolution before the transfer window shuts. That's progression. That's a good thing. Okay, take that as a good thing that he does actually want to leave. And if he does leave, we might get a few quid out of him. And that's important as well. Okay. Leading on from that, though, it's still with Eric Dyer, And Fabrizio Romano did say that Eric Dyer is up for sale by Tottenham. Uh, Dyer is a last minute option for Bayern Munich who are looking for a defender. Um, if you're not aware, they have open negotiations with Fulham for Paulinha, but obviously it's now a day and a half left of the window. Paulinha being Fulham's best player, before they sell him, they want people in the door. Fair enough, right? If you're going to lose your best player you, and you've got a day and a half left, you kind of want to go, we want to make sure we can get players in before we sell this guy. Because if we can't, he's staying, right? Whereas Bayern might then look at Spurs and go, Eric Dyer, can we get him? And, and us going, yeah, what flight do you want him on? You know, we'll, we'll probably be quite more accommodating than Fulham would be, right? But there is a bid in for Eric Dyer that we have rejected, okay? Now, I know you're sitting there going, why are we rejecting a bid? We're overpricing players with this, that, the other. Hold your horses, okay? And it came from two different sources, Football Insider being one of the first one who said that Tottenham have rejected a loan bid, from Burnley for Eric Dyer. And then Peter O'Rourke also put in that they've rejected a loan bid from Burnley uh, for a loan bid, sorry, for Eric Dyer. Now, that's that's a good thing. We shouldn't be loaning out a player that, let's be honest, we could probably go and get five mil for. We shouldn't be loaning him out and basically letting him run down his contract, basically going for free. We should be getting five mil, cashing in on him, using that money in this window. Will that happen? Probably not, I can't lie. I'm not sitting here with a ton of confidence about it. But we should be looking at a permanent transfer. A loan deal is like the absolute last resort. You think of Plan Z, whatever's after Plan Z, that should be the last situation. Um, this is an England international who can do a job in the Premier League for a mid-table team, you know, bottom half team. No, no issues. I've always said that. You know I've always said that. You can go and get five mil from him. And I think what Spurs are holding on to is there's the last day of the window. You never know. Someone might get injury today. Someone might get suspensions. Someone might move on defender-wise. Right, we need to go get defender replace him. Eric Dyer, Prem proven, 29, not too old, in his prime. We'll go get him because we can get him on cheap as well. Happy days. Suits us, you know. So that's on Eric Dyer. Let's talk a quick little update on Tangi and Dombele. So obviously yesterday reported that Genoa had a bit accepted for a loan deal. 
then obviously it was then rejected by Ndombele himself. He's hung out for a Champions League club. An update. Inter have not submitted any formal bid for Tangi Ndombele yet. Just asked for conditions of the deal, waiting for an internal decision. Galatasaray remain keen on signing in Dumbele in any case any European loan deal collapses. We've got we've got plan B in Galatasaray, we've got plan A in Inter. He wants the Champions League club. Boom, there you go. No excuses, the two there. You know, and, and also Spurs might have to look at this and kind of go, look, we're not gonna be able to sell him. We're not gonna get a cracking deal out of this. But you know what? If we if we get someone to pay 30 or 40% of his wages, we'll have to bite the bullet on this one and then next summer look to get rid of him on the cheap. And pray that he does well this season and well enough that we can get him off the books to next year, you know. But yeah, just a small little update on Dembele. I'm not going to spend time on that. I'm going to wait for something to materialise there because there is no bids other than probably Galatasaray, but I'm going to wait for a, a big bid. And that was from Fabrizio Romano, so that is legitimate. Um, really quickly on Davison Sanchez. This came from Rick Elfrink, who is very much in the know of the PSV world. He said that earlier this week, PSV inquired into Davison Sanchez. It was too expensive at the time, but PSV expected to keep pushing. My, I think my opinion is of this, and, and I hope you're with me in this realistic thought process that he's basically now sub, um, established himself as the third centre-half, you know, the, the first backup, as you call it. That's not from the in-between us. The first backup, if we are to move him on, we're going to want someone in before we let him go. Simple as that. Because... We can't go into the season with Romero and Van der Ven, who are fantastic, and I love both of them, and then Ben Davies and Jaffa Tanganga behind. Because that is a huge step off. A huge step off. You know, Ashley Phillips, you might put in that realm, and, you know, okay, fair enough. But in reality, I would like a, not a project centre-half, but I'd like a, a, a centre-half a bit like a Mickey Van der Ven, who could come in and play... But also needs a little bit of time to get to grips. You know, I think Van der Ven's hit the ground running, but that doesn't always happen with a signing. Sometimes he, he needs a week or two. He needs a couple of months. You know, I, I'm a bit surprised how, how how quiet not only the Persher's link is, but also the Tosin Adara bio. I, I know he's training on his own at Fulham, but it's gone it's gone radio silent. I don't I don't really accept it. Um, so there's that on the situation with Sanchez, Dyer and Indombele. A little bit of news on Dane Scarlett. I want to go this before I speak about uh, Pierre Hoiberg. Um, he, Dane Scarlett, is actually going out on loan to Ipswich Town. It's been reported, Paul O'Keefe, Rob Guest, all the sources, he's going off to Ipswich Town, which in the Championship, it's another step up from last season. Good, solid um, league, the Championship. I like the Championship a lot. There's a good amount of teams in there. And this is where you can really get to grips with learning the game, you know, learning how to make an attacking run, learning, you know, hold up play, learning how to win fouls, all these things. Because you're going to get, no offence, you're going to get lumps kicked out of you in the Championship. It's a physical old league. It's a quick old league. Of the world. And yes, it's not the Premier League, but it's quick. And 46 games a season they play in the Championship. He's going to get a good amount of game time. And I think this is a really positive move, you know. And I'm going to keep an eye on him because... I think the ability is there, okay? Um, Paul O'Keefe also followed up that he is also likely to extend his current contract. So if you did want to know that, there you are. Let's talk Hoiberg. Now, at first I was disappointed with this news and then I dug a bit deeper. And this is a big thing. If you see this little bit of publication on some of the Spurs fan pages, they always hold a little bit off because they want to get you bite in because obviously they want algorithm numbers. Come speak to me. Algorithm numbers... It's just you and I on a conversation. That's why I like comments. We get more and more people coming into this, I think, really healthy community where we're talking positively about Spurs. Sometimes we're negative and that's OK. We're human. But the idea is to remain positive as much as we can. OK, so this comes in from Simon Jones in the mail. And he said that Atletico Madrid revived talks with Tottenham Hotspur over signing Pierre Hoiberg on loan. Now, that's what they said. That's what all those big Twitter Spurs fan pages put out. OK. Once you dig a little bit deeper, there's an obligation to buy for 40 million. Happy. I'm fine. That's a good deal. While, whilst you read the first part without the obligation, it's a bad deal. I'm unhappy. He has value. We should be selling him. But if you're guaranteeing yourself 40 million the following summer, that's a good deal. Because I think you would have gotten less this summer as you would next summer with this obligation. So in my opinion, pull the trigger. Let him go. 
let him go. If we can get 40 million from him, that's a good amount of money. OK, that's a good amount of money that we're going to want and we're going to need next summer, probably. When you haven't sold like a Harry Kane, you haven't sold these sort of players, you're not going to have as much money. That's the kind of deal we want to do. All right. So, yeah, that was just the updates about outgoings. Just really quickly on the Fatty situation, you know, all these. This this is the thing, you know, we we, we reported all the Barcelona reports. We reported how Spurs are number one. We reported how Ansu Fati was like, I'm going to Spurs. He told people, I'm going to Spurs. David Ornstein, th this is the big dog. Him and Romano are the two big dogs. David Ornstein said that Spurs were linked with a uh, move for Ansu Fati, but head coach Ange Postacoglu was prioritising a different type of forward before the transfer deadline. Brennan Johnson, that's who it is, by the way. Just let you know. I don't know if you knew that. But it does kind of look like we we liked the idea of Fatty. And actually, there was more that came out that said that there was a deal sort of in place, but we pulled the plug. It wasn't Fatty rejecting us. It wasn't Barca rejecting us. We pulled the plug. The deal is you're covering 75%, 80% of his wages, which you're looking at about, if I'm working off the top of my head, something like eight, nine million pounds you're covering, plus a loan fee, which is probably about two, three million. On top of that, there is no loan, there is no buyback. Uh, sorry, there's no buy option. It is a straight loan deal, and that's what Brighton are paying. So they're paying about 13 million for Ansu Fati with no buy deal. Because at the end of the day, Barca see value in him. Barca see him as a player for the future. They just want to be able to get Jao Cancelo in now. And if you don't know, Barcelona's situation is so bad, they've loaned Jao Cancelo in, but they had to remove his buy option because of FFP. That's how bad their situation is, by the way. Anyway, anyway, guys, that's the end of the video. Drop a like on the video if you did enjoy. Him in the comment section below. Not about Ansu Fati. Let's let's forget about him. Let's talk about the dire situation. Let's talk about Endon Bele. Dane Scarlett's move. I really want to hear about Dane Scarlett. Probably as much as anything. The Hoiberg buy with obligation. All these things. Hit in the comment section. Let's bounce off one another. Let's be a bit more confident and positive about things. Um, subscribe to the channel if you are new. We passed 1,300 yesterday and then we went over a little bit as well. So I guess 1,400 is on the, on the way as well, which is nice. And uh, hit the bell notification for more. But also just give you an update, there are videos to come. I promise there's between now and the end of the window, I will be a busy boy. I'll be releasing multiple videos. So you're going to want to hit that bell notification. But anyway, guys, that's the end of the video and I'll see you all very, very soon. Take care, guys.